Welcome everyone, this is Tim Taranga with Rapid NLP, and I am joined today with my very good friend, Mr. Telman Knutson. And if you've been on the internet before, you've probably heard of this gentleman. You may know him as the most sought after entrepreneurial wealth hypnotist. You may have heard him from his, um, his pledge drive of Run, Telman, Run. He's an infinite, infamous marketer. He's trained over half a million people on how to create a business online and, and do internet marketing list building. You may have also seen him gallivanting with Richard Branson. So that's just getting started. Uh, I've asked Telman here to give us some secrets on what he's been able to do and how he's been able to, to build this business really on the foundation of his knowledge with NLP. So with that introduction, Telman, thank you so much for being here and thank you so much for participating in uh, in the interview today. Oh yeah, it's, it's a pleasure, Tim. I always love working with you and anything we can do to help a bunch of NLPers out to supercharge things is absolutely fantastic. So I'm, I'm excited. Absolutely. And, and par pardon me guys, is I, I have a bit of a, a, a cough and right now I'm getting over a cold. And so hopefully this interview will be <laughs> as clean as possible. But if I start hacking in the background, don't worry, I'll probably, I'll probably get through it. Okay. So even in between, even, even in between hacking coughs, what you've promised to do is really spill your secrets on, on what you've been able to do to grow your business. And I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, dig in on that in just a moment. But before we get there, Tellman, give us a little bit of your background. I mean, what were you like as a kid? What did you want to be when you grew up? Tell us about little Tellman. Sure. Sure. So, um, Today, I live in uh, semi-rural Vermont, right? I grew up not that far from here, actually, though it seems uh, a lot further away than it actually is. Is I, I grew up in rural New Hampshire, which is a uh, very, very, um, it was kind of like a redneck, hyper-conservative kind of area versus Vermont, which is more artsy hippie, right? And uh, I, I went to public school and I was, uh, I, let's see, I didn't do very well as a kid. I, I had um, femoral antiversion. My my femurs in both of my legs, going between my hip and my and my knees, were twisted in. It's a semi semi rare uh, uh, leg deformity, right? And so basically, both of my feet pointed in at forty five degree angles um, all growing up, and and I was just literally tripping over myself as I would walk down the hallway in, in school which does a lot for your self-esteem. Yeah. Also really good if you, if, you're, if, you, if you want to learn how to build thick skin so that like people picking on you never bothers you again, that's a good place to start. Um, uh, and I was really bad in school. I generally got A's and D's, mostly D's. <laughs> um, I had uh, tutors um, in the meantime after school because I, got, I, I generally uh, got pretty bad grades. I, had some learning disabilities and, and we didn't know what it all was. And then we found out that I had ADD, right? And this was kind of in the early stages of the big ADD thing. Um, so, uh, yeah, I didn't do well in school. I was socially absolutely horrible. I didn't understand how to convey my own thinking, my own thoughts to other people in a way that they could understand them. I was always the kid saying that weird thing that nobody really understood. Um, and likewise, I, I didn't really connect very well with most other people. So. Um, so socially, uh, I was I was pretty bad. Uh, academically, I was terrible. Um, my 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 legs were all twisted up, and 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 my feet were pointing in, and I literally couldn't catch a ball until I was 23 years old. I had no hand-eye coordination whatsoever, and so uh, all of these things made for a uh, little Talman that was not very competent yeah. at all, and. Um, uh, that, that, that thinking back on my childhood, honestly, a lot of people have a lot of fond memories of being a child. That just wasn't wasn't the uh, the the story that I had. And so, um, uh, interestingly, and we'll talk about this in a little while, I'm sure. Uh, NLP it was a critical critical factor in turning a, all of this around for me in a really amazing way. And we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later on. But um, basically, as a child, my life sucked. Um, my parents got separated like a lot of people when, when I was eight and, uh, I didn't get along with either one of my parents. And so my dad was working all the time. My mom lived somewhere else, um, had more parents than I could count on one hand between marriages, remarriages and remarriages and multiple step parents and all this kind of stuff. Um, I moved out when I was 16, uh, you know, I was working and, 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 and so on and so forth. So, 
um, uh, I mean, I, it was a lot of struggle as a kid, a yeah. lot of struggle. And then eventually for me, um, uh, in, in high school, I discovered distance running. And even though my feet were all twi twisted in and I was not an athlete at all, um, I found uh, distance running as a as a tool where I could just kind of go internal and be and just do my own thing and and ended up and I'm sure it kept me out of jail. You know, I ended up discovering distance running and uh, it it changed it changed everything for me in terms of gave me a tool something I could focus on where nobody else was involved. The results that I got were entirely on me and me alone. And um, it turned out that one thing that I did have was uh, an exceptionally high pain tolerance. <laughs> and so um, uh, I, I um, also happen to really, really love hot peppers. And um, I've never lost a hot pepper eating contest. And I have a you know big library of about a thousand different hot sauces in my kitchen. Oh, wow. uh, my, my first company was a, was a salsa company. It was called Tillman Salsa. Um, I started uh, with my now wife Jody on our on our first date in college. We started our, our first business together, which is a uh, salsa company. So, um, so anyway, that that was kind of my 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 uh, uh, early childhood. Kind of yeah, kind of sucked in a lot of ways. I mean, there were good things, you know what I mean. And um, uh, you know, even though I didn't get along with my parents, I had parents that really truly did care about me very deeply. And um, I, I, have, I have a great family now that I, that, you know, that I'm married and have children now and, and I get along with my parents now great and my sister great and, and mostly that's because of NLP. Um, and again, we can talk about that more in a, in a little bit, but that's, 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 uh, that's a little, the little Talman story. Yeah, that's, that's great. So obviously humble beginnings and it's awesome to see I didn't, I didn't really know that. I didn't see your progression, so we'll talk about that. In fact, let's sure. jump into that, that right now. So I know you as the very successful business entrepreneur, um, kind of a, a mentor to other very successful entrepreneurs. Um, tell me, Tillman, what were you doing before you discovered NLP? Like, what was the story that got you into uh, learning NLP? Yeah, so so interestingly, in a, in a bizarre turn of events, it comes back to running right and um uh, it's, a, it's a really awesome story I'll, I'll try to tell it fairly quickly basically as i mentioned my my legs were all messed up i i had no self-confidence i had no self-esteem you know my 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 parents had split up and all that you know i was bad in school i was bad socially all these kind of things and um uh, someone convinced me to try to go out to, to join the cross country team. As a matter of fact, it was Matt Daigle, the last day of school in eighth grade. Matt Daigle uh, rode the same bus as me, and we rode M14, M for Mascoma, which is which is the school district, right? And M14, we had this bus driver named Bug Eyes because he had these crazy eyes that like nah, they were just, uh, they were messed up. I think he had some sort of weird disease or something. But um, Matt Daigle. Uh, was like, dude, you should come, you should try for the cross country team. You're tall and skinny. And I'm like, yeah, you know, he's like, it's that or you're going to just sit at home playing video games by yourself, you know, after school all next year. And, and, and in case you don't know, cross country running is not a sexy sport, right? It's not, it's not a sport that um, a lot of people come and watch because you get to watch the beginning and the end, right? Uh, three mile race through the woods, uh, not a spectator sport. Um, and in, in, in most schools, it's, it's not, it's, it's kind of a last ditch effort. If you're going to join, be on a sport and you, and you suck at all the other sports, you join cross country, right? Well, Matt Daigle, um, was a naturally gifted runner and he started running in sixth grade and he was winning in many cases high school races this guy could wow. run like the wind he was just amazing and and we rode the same bus together and so we were we, I mean, we, were, we were definitely friends um, and you know sometimes I'd go over to his house to play or whatever and and so he was like, you should, you should, you should come out for cross country and check it out. And, I, and, 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 I, and he just wouldn't let up because they really needed people on the team the next year because the team was really, really lean. Um, and, and that last day of school, the coach, Bill Bellion, um, ordered everybody to go out and recruit some people. And I was the last person on the bus that Matt could possibly recruit before the end of the year. So I ended up saying yes. And, uh, the summer passed. And then two weeks before, um, Two weeks before the run, or two weeks before school started, um, 
uh, practice started. And so I went to practice and I, I remember I ran around the, the field one time because we didn't have a track or, you know, low budget public school. And we ran around the soccer field, which is about, uh, I think, half a mile around it. And I remember my lungs felt like they were bleeding. I could taste like that iron in the back of my throat. My muscles in my legs felt like they were about to rip off. You know, I was just bent over all, and this is the warm up. This is the warm up, <laughs> and I was just destroyed. And, um, and 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 then on the second time around the field, about a third of the way through, something happened. And what happened was, I slipped into what's called the zone. The endorphins kicked in, and for the first time in my life, I experienced the flow state. And it was the first time that I have in my memory of being a child of experiencing a complete lack of stress. Wow. Where That's all awesome. of my worries, all of my anxieties, all my, all my self-confidence issues, they all just went away. And I was like, whoa, I want more of this. <laughs> and so I kept running and I kept coming back to practice. And what ended up happening is uh, a few weeks later, uh, after school started and stuff, I um, I was really getting into it, right? And 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 I was really getting into running. It was finally something, you know. I, some, I was seeing progression. I was seeing like I, I went and I trained. And I did something, and like a couple days later, I'd be in better shape. I'd be able to run around the field faster, and like I was breathing better, and I was I could see muscles starting to form in my body for the first time, and things. It was cool, and I. And, and what happened was then I had to go back in for my annual leg exam where they would check out my, my leg for the femoral antiversion issue. But you have to understand my parents had separated. And so we had missed the last three years of annual exams. Mm. And this was in ninth grade, freshman year in high school. And what ended up happening was um, after, after all of this, I, I went in and, and they looked at the, my legs and they looked at the x-rays and they, they looked back at my legs and they looked back at the x-rays and the doctors were like, mm, 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 and they were shaking their heads. And basically what happened was they said, look, um, most kids grow out of this by the time that they're your age, their, their bodies kind of adjust and adapt and their bones kind of bend back around. And most kids get rid of it for the most part, but you didn't. Hmm. So unfortunately you missed your last three years of exams. And that means your bones are starting to harden up because you're entering puberty right now. And what that means is you have two, two options. Option one is you live the rest of your life with your feet pointing in at 45 degree angles. Option number two is we break both of your legs. We put flat breaks in both of your femurs. We spin your legs around forward. Then we put eight to 10 pins in each leg. Eesh. Then we put your legs in casts for six months to a year from the hips down. And then you're in braces for six months to a year after that. I'm like, wow, those are some great options. Thanks. Thanks, doc. And um, I said, well, if I go through with this operation, will I ever be able to run again? And he chuckled. Oh, my gosh. And he's like, no. I mean, no. And so I was like, geez, well, can I, can I finish the cross-country running season? Since this apparently is going to be my last one. And they said, well... Okay, and we actually scheduled the operation in for my birthday, which is January eighteenth. That you know, yes. in the in the winter, and so I was in. I was going to my last cross country season, and what ended up happening was, I went back to practice the next day, and I gave it everything I had, and I kept on giving it everything I had, and then I started running to school in the morning. We lived 6.8 miles away from the school and I started running to school in the morning frequently with my backpack on. Wow. And then I'd start running home from school after, after practice. After practice. Wow. Pretty soon, before the end of my first season, I was I was sometimes cresting 20 miles in a day. Jeez. Right? And I was like 15 or something. And it was nearing the end of the season and I started out as the slowest guy on the team and what ended up happening was I slowly sped up, sped up, sped up and, and then I became the seventh guy on the team, which meant I was a scoring member of the team. And what, what and, and, and then I was I, I ended up fighting between fifth and seventh place with, with a couple other guys by the end of the season. But what happened was three quarters of the way through the season, Bill Bellion, the coach, 
and back when I was a kid, they called me Telly, short for Tellman. He said, Telly, Telly, come on over here, come here. And he had this vein that would bulge out of his forehead when he was angry. He's like, come here. I thought I was gonna get yelled at for goofing off or something. And he's like, you look down at your legs. I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, your legs. He's like, I was looking at your legs while you were running just now. He's like, I think they're starting to straighten up. Wow. And I was, and I hadn't even noticed. And I looked, and sure enough, my like I started paying attention to it, and my 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 legs and my feet were all coming back into alignment, and I realized that the only reason that this was the case was because I had focused all of my intention on giving running everything that I had. And the muscles in my body got so strong, they literally bent my bones back around forward. And when I realized that, when I realized that, I realized unquestionably that my mind has the ability to change the physical world around me. And from that moment forward, I started applying that mentality to everything in my life. And I was primarily focused on running for several years. That was my one outlet where I put everything that I had. I ended up becoming one of the fastest runners in the state through, throughout high school. And then I ended up running nationally in college. But that was my first big mind over matter moment where I realized that I was in complete control of everything down to a physical level. and. Then I, in college, I went on to, to study brain waves, altered states of consciousness, and peak performance in athletes. I wanted to learn how to get back into the flow state whenever I wanted with my running. And that's when I discovered hypnosis and ultimately NLP in my academic studies and my research. And that was absolutely fascinating. And, and, and what, what ended up happening is I was reading and studying NLP on an academic level, and then I was writing papers about it in school, and I was doing experiments as it relates to uh, running, and it was working. I was getting into the flow state and everything else, and I'd use anchors and triggers and you know uh, certain words and touch the back of the hand and all that kind of stuff, and it was working, and I was crushing it with my running. Awesome. And then I thought, why can't I apply? If I can focus for hours while I'm running, why can't I flip my brain so I can focus while I'm reading and actually finish reading a chapter in a book successfully so that I could up my grades? And I did, and it worked. Fast forward, what ended up happening was really, really interesting and, and horrible at the same time. At the end of my junior year in college, I get this phone call, and I mentioned that I didn't really get along with my parents growing up, including my dad. We just never saw things eye to eye. We had very different perspectives on the world. I hadn't talked to him in months and the, and the last conversation I had had with him was an argument. And I get this call that he's in the hospital hmm. and he had had a triple upper aortal aneurysm, um, which is what my grandfather had died from. And and it's a genetic thing. And and, and his aorta, which comes out of your heart, had, had, had swelled in three spots right next to each other, blown up like balloons. And normally you have one of those and it explodes and you die and you're done and, and you don't even know what happened. Well, in my dad's case, his, his, his cardiovascular health and his diet was so bad that um, he had three of them all next to each other and caused enormous abdominal pain. So he was able to call 911. He, he was rushed into the hospital. They were bringing him in on the gurney and literally his aorta exploded on his way into the hospital. And, um, and he died and then they sliced him open and he was very overweight at the time they cut cut his entire chest cavity open and went in and they managed to not only sew him back to, so 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 his aorta back up and uh, but they managed to resuscitate him wow and then the the wound was so big and so intense that um they they were trying to you know deal with sewing him back together and he flatlines again and so he literally died twice in the same day and they resuscitated him again. But at this point, the, the wound in his chest was so big, it swelled up so much, they literally couldn't sew him back together. They couldn't sew him back together. Jeez. So they had to induce a state of chemical coma. Unfortunately, the drugs that they used to induce a state of chemical coma caused the body to hold water, which meant the swelling wouldn't go down. So he was suspended in a chemical coma for a month and a half with like a 4% chance to live. Everybody thought he was gonna die. My parents were divorced, so I had to drop out of school, deal with my dad's business, he's a dentist, 
and, and his house and his bank accounts and all this kind of stuff. I had no idea what I was doing. I had a business that was failing. Uh, you know, my, my girlfriend that I was living with at the time leaves me because my life was just all crazy and I was, I'm sure, a big jerk. And like everything just fell apart. And I was trying to, I was looking for another another job to, to pay the bills. Um, and, and what ended up happening was I saw this hypnosis certification uh, ad, classified ad in the newspaper. And long story short, I went down and I took it because I wanted to stay focused on my studies. I spent my last two thousand dollars. I had one hundred and fifty bucks left in the bank account. I spent my last two grand on hypnosis certification, and uh, I ended up be- I, it becoming amazingly like it was the first thing in my, in my life that I was ever naturally really good at, other than eating hot peppers. <laughs> and it was awesome. So I ended up becoming a hypnotist. I was working as a for eight dollars and fifty cents an hour in a hypnosis franchise in a positive changes hypnosis franchise where, you know, because my trainer hired me. Um, that's where I read unlimited power when a client didn't show up by Tony Robbins. Um, and what ended up happening was I learned hypnosis first, but positive changes was big on NLP as well. Mm -hmm. And all the methods that I was learning were very NLP laden. And I ended up, um, I ended up really getting into it and, And then I got trained and certified in NLP, but I I started using all these principles. And as soon as I started using NLP, what happened in my personal life was it taught me how to listen to other people. And then it taught me basically, like many, many of the people probably watching this, it taught me how to communicate in other people's language instead of my own. So instead of using words that I might use, or instead of talking about ideas or metaphors or concepts that I thought were interesting, I talked about ideas and metaphors and concepts and principles and through you know visual auditory kinesthetic and modalities and towards and away from and all that stuff in their language and all of a sudden people liked me <laughs> all of a sudden I found it easy to make friends all of a sudden I could diffuse any argument with either one of my parents in person or on the phone all of a sudden I was able to get along with my sister for the first time in my life on a consistent basis it was awesome it was absolutely awesome. It changed everything for me. So I know that was a long story, <laughs> but that's what, I mean, that's how I got started with NLP. Wow. What an incredible, what an incredible journey that process was. Yeah. And to, and to go through something like that and to, um, to see the results right away, just from implementing some of those techniques. That's incredible. Yeah. So tell me, I have a question for you. Number one, you have you got such great results applying what you learn, not just reading it, not just absorbing it, but actually using the techniques. And then you made another transition, which is going to be very interested, very interesting to the people that are listening to this interview, which is you took it from using NLP for yourself most, uh, mostly and to your, your sphere of influence that was directly around you. And then you took that information and discovered how you can use it to start making money with it. So how did that process evolve? Yeah, so um, first I was working for literally 8.50 an hour hypnotizing people. I did that for about a year and a half. I hypnotized thousands of people. (coughs) Then something really interesting happened. So I was the head hypnotist at two separate positive changes offices. One was in Massachusetts, 45 minutes away. And one was here in Vermont. And so a few times a week, I'd drive to Massachusetts. And I was on my way to Massachusetts. And I, I'm a big heavy metal fan. I always have been. And I was listening to a heavy metal station called 107.3 out of Boston, W-A-A-F. And Mistress Carrie was on. And she was the DJ. And Mistress Carrie was complaining about the fact that she hadn't slept in like four days. And I... I, I'm like, I didn't have a cell phone. I couldn't afford one at the time. I, right. Finally, I pull over on the interstate, you know, at the next exit, I'm, I'm, I'm scraping up quarters from the floor of my car. I go over to the payphone and I fill it with quarters and I call Boston. And I'm like, yo, I can come in. I'll just call in sick to work and I can hypnotize, hypnotize you in order to sleep well. And she's like, we're all booked up today, but can you come in tomorrow? I was like, sold. So I went in the next day I drove to Boston two and a half hours away to hypnotize Mr. Scary about insomnia. And then I knew I was going to get a lot of radio exposure 
I didn't know if it was going to be a successful hypnosis session or not. I suspected it probably would be. And and for, for the record, in my opinion, hip, uh, NLP is a offshoot of hypnosis. That's the way I look at it. NLP is essentially a, a, a half brother of hypnosis, right? And um, so I, I always use them in tandem. Right. And what happened was uh, I went, I hypnotized her. She had an amazing experience. I said that I charged $500 a session live on air um, in Boston. And as a result, I ended up generating all these clients. I would drive to Boston once a week and down in the lobby of WAF, which was a brand new building at the time, I had this portable hypnosis recording studio and um, in, 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 a, in a metal briefcase and with this you know stereo tape player and headphones and binaural beat CD player and all the and little mini mixer I bought at Radio Shack. And um, I don't have it in my office right here, it's upstairs. But what happened was I went from charging a maximum of $75 an hour for a one-on-one -on -one session to 500 because I changed my audience. And so once a week I'd go and I'd hypnotize five to 10 people in the lobby of WAF and occasionally I'd just do a house call and drive to their house. 500 bucks cash each session, boom, 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 boom. I could make $5,000 in a day. That was more than I made in a month. Wow. That was more than I made in a month. So that was a huge, a huge aha, change your audience, right? Um, in this case, I got in front of a more affluent audience and I got, and I got my, the word out to a lot more people. I was hypnotizing, the, like I hypnotized the CEO of the radio station, you know, several times. And so that was, that was a really big aha moment. Um, eventually I went out and just started my, exclusively, exclusively my own practice and um, much in part due to my success with these $500 clients. And, um, and, and then I eventually got to the point where several years later, I was still primarily based in Vermont and I had pretty much hypnotized the entire town. <laughs> and what, ha what happened for me is I started, I was, I was seeing, I, I, I got six offices that I built up. I started learning direct response marketing, but I was, I, I, cash flow was still a problem. I didn't have any employees. And so I, hire, I, I didn't want to hire anyone because I didn't want the responsibility. I didn't know how to do it and all that kind of stuff. And then I, I, I eventually started taking on the, the negative traits of my clients because I would think right. about them all the time between sessions. And I found I was biting my nails. I found I was crave, having cravings for really unhealthy food. I was having negative thoughts. And I was like, what, what the heck is going on here? I was like, oh, I'm reinforcing my own thoughts with all the negative patterns of my of my clients because I'm thinking about their problems all the time. So this is the problem. If you become tremendously successful at NLP or hypnosis, a problem that you may very likely run into is that you're focused on problems, not on solutions in order to find the solutions to the problem. And I didn't know what to do. I said, there's got to be a better way. And I was still having a hard time paying my college loans, even though I was seeing 12 to 14 clients a day, six days a week. Oh, wow. And I said, I, the internet, the internet has got to have the answers for me. I can sell recordings of my hypnosis stuff on the internet. And so I made this program with a good friend of mine growing up named Kyle Battis. He had become a personal trainer. He focused on weight loss. I had helped thousands of people lose weight with, with hypnosis and NLP. So we created the five keys to permanent fat loss. It's a two CD set. We wrote a sales letter, we put it online. Nobody bought it. Nobody bought it. It was 20 bucks. We couldn't sell that thing to save our lives. But you would have charged $1,000 for those two sessions. Yeah, couldn't, it, I mean, there was nothing we could do. And I was like, man, I've got to get good at this marketing stuff. And so I started studying direct response marketing. I interviewed ultimately about 80 of the world's best self-improvement guys and direct response marketing guys who are all doing business online learned what they were good at, da, 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 da. And then what I started doing is I started hypnotizing myself with the traits of these guys. And as a result, what happened was I realized that I needed to build my own email list. I needed to build my own following, but I didn't, that didn't really hit home until I got my first big check. I got my first big check and I actually have it right here. Check this out. I got my first big check from this program right here. It's called the Nitro Marketing Mindset. And as you can see, it's all these CDs. 
right? And I did this with Nitro Marketing. What I did, and this is an entirely NLP based program. Um, as a matter of fact, um, I got a cease and desist at one point from from a, a very well known name in NLP um, because I was using the word NLP in the marketing, and they were trying to be kind of jerks about it. And uh, it all worked it worked itself out. But um, what happened was. Uh, I got a $13,000 check and, 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 and this right here, it's copyrighted 2004. It's right there, 2004. So I got a $13,000 royalty check in the mail from Nitro Marketing because I, I spent probably 12 hours interviewing the guys from Nitro. The, the, at, at the time, I was the two founders, Matt Gill and Kevin. Okay, we're good. Yeah, we're at the time, uh, it was Matt Gill and Kevin Wilkie uh, who founded Nitro Marketing, and I decided to do NLP modeling interviews with them. The problem is, if you've ever looked up NLP modeling, there might have been some good books that came out of it in the last few years, but in 2004, if you actually wanted to study modeling and actually get good at it, there was nobody teaching you how to get good at modeling. There was nobody who actually had a, a linear process that you could follow. So I read all these books that made my brain swell. That made, it made my brain hurt so bad on modeling and then just basically used that knowledge to put together my own process. I interviewed these guys. Uh, we sent a survey out to their list to find out the habits that their list wanted to create, their, their traits that they wanted that, that, that Matt and Kevin had. And then I interviewed them on those topics and then I created NLP based sessions. And so this series is the entire, um, so there's focus, part one, two, and three. Focus NLP session one, two, and three. Follow through um, uh, NLP sessions. Um, here's the Matt and Kevin live. And then there's, uh, I think, motivation, maybe. Um, did a bunch of interviews with, with, with some of the other folks that, that, that worked for Nitro at the time. And ultimately interviewed them and then created NLP sessions to install focus follow through and motivation in the minds of the customers. Got my $13,000 check and that was a happy day. Yeah, that. Next check I got was about $5,000. Then it was $2,500. Then it was $1,000 and then there wasn't any more because it wasn't a great selling product. It mm. didn't crush it. It didn't do extremely well. These are guys who were regularly doing multi, 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 multi. They were one of the early mega launch guys in the internet marketing scene. They had, they were crushing it. And I was like, man, if I had my own list, I could just come up with a new product and roll it out. But I didn't. And that's when I got serious about list building. And I realized that as an entrepreneur, as a marketer, I needed a following. I needed a group of people who wanted to buy all my stuff. And that's leverage. So what ended up happening was I decided to learn how to do this. And, and, and so, so I literally started interviewing people. I started hypnotizing myself. I would create hypnosis sessions for my students. And then I would interview all these people on ultimately marketing and we'd sell their stuff at the end. And, and that's how I made my first million dollars. I mean, I made $800,000. Once I decided to do this interview series, do my own thing, $800,000 my first year wow. and all selling other people's stuff. And it was not, it, yes, it was because I learned the marketing strategies, but those change over time. Right. It was because I knew how to flip the switches in my brain to focus on thinking, acting, and behaving like other people who'd already been down the path. So I applied, again, applied these principles to myself and saw a massive result. It was I mean, just saw enormous growth. And it was awesome, and that and that continued to be my secret weapon. Fast forward a little while, what happened was um, I became the list building guy. I eventually bought listbuilding.com. We built a list of over half a million people. We helped over 100,000 customers and clients uh, start internet businesses and, and get good at email marketing and list building. And did that for, for seven years until I until I started getting really bored with teaching the same thing over and over and over again and just having to repackage it in a new way. And because in the internet marketing scene, everybody's a newbie. I mean, basically everybody that's coming in is brand new, 
and I just got tired with it. Right. And I re- and I remembered, oh, and so I built up this big multi-million dollar company. I had 35 employees. Everybody worked from home all around the world, making millions of dollars, all this stuff. But I lost my interest in it. And I lost my interest in it because marketing, though I love it, was a skill that I needed to learn in order to get where I wanted to go. And I got sidetracked. Hmm. And so a few years ago, I, I went ahead and I shut down my marketing company. And I refocused all my time, effort, and energy back on hypnosis and NLP. And so now today I focus on hypnotizing um, entrepreneurs and I hypnotize you to think, act, and behave like a wealthy version of yourself. And I, I use NLP principles and processes in all of my sessions. Um, and, and today I, um, I, 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 I get in front of large groups of people in different ways. I speak publicly, so I get up in front of entrepreneurs and I hypnotize several hundred people all at, all at the same time. Um, and then I will uh, create online programs, so pre-recorded programs, uh, and that sell for anywhere from seven dollars to a thousand bucks. Um, and 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 uh, we sell them that way. And then we have online webinars and teleseminars where uh, where I give people a live interactive virtual experience where we'll do hypnosis and NLP processes to give people a taste, and then and, and sell one of our programs. Um, so uh, yeah, I mean that. It's a lot, but I know you asked a small question and it kind of blossomed. But yeah, that, that's kind of wh- how it all happened. Yeah, I mean, that's a big transition into making money with NLP, not just making a little bit of money, but growing a business into the multi million dollar per year revenue mark is just fantastic. And then just to reiterate what you said, you really basically shut all that down to focus on what you're currently doing, which is helping people in the areas of hypnosis and, and NLP to create better wealth for themselves. I know yeah. th- that's intriguing for me. I've gone through a ton of your c- courses. Um, if someone wants to get more information, where can we direct them to, to to get some more information about that from you? Yeah, well, so in, if you want to get information about that, you have to get on the secret list. Can we give them the secret list? Yeah, you can. Okay, okay. It's going to look really weird when you go there, um, but literally, this is a secret list. This is not the, like nobody knows about it. So you have to go to thewealthmethod.com, thewealthmethod.com. Just put in your name and email. You'll get on my list. And then and then I'll send you some stuff every now and again about about what we're working on right now. Uh, I've been on your list for I've been on I was on your Internet marketing list way back when uh, I'm on your several of your lists now you provide very high quality content so if if, for those of you listening now uh go ahead and jump on over there very high quality content um tellman if you're to give someone advice maybe let's just go ahead and assume that someone's just starting out with nlp maybe they've picked up a book maybe they've even gone through an entire nlp online training course but they still feel like a newbie What's maybe your best tip, your best piece of advice that you can give them um, so that they can start so that they can make that transition that you did, which is how do I make money with this information? So number number one, as a brand new NLP practitioner or as a veteran, if you're wondering why you're not making enough money, it's because you haven't decided to specialize. You're promoting NLP all over the place or you're promoting hypnosis all over the place. Nobody gives a damn. Okay, not really. And the people that do generally don't have much money. So focus your intention on the solution that you provide and focus on providing a solution that you care about deeply and passionately and that you know the the, the context of the situation in and out. Ideally, one that you used NLP to solve for yourself, okay? Now, in today's day and age, you can get to people who are looking for a solution to that problem and NLP happens to be the vehicle. It happens to be the mechanism by which you can solve their problem. All they care about is solving their problem or developing the skill, the ability or resource that they are looking for, okay? If they happen to know about NLP too, happy day. Do a little jig, do a little dance, (laughs) fine. But you have to assume that your clients have never even heard of NLP when they're walking in the door. Number two is use the internet in order to reach these people because you can target them better than ever. What are the big ones? Well, the game has changed. The game has changed. Use Google Trends in order to search for some different topics that you think you can help people with with NLP. Choose trends that are going up, okay, not down, okay? So um, insomnia. Insomnia is a huge, huge issue today. People don't care as much about stress anymore. Insomnia, they care about. 
Just an, just an example. Um, next is start doing free sessions. Okay, do free sessions to get experience working with people. Do them online, do them offline. Use a video Skype conversation. Do sessions on the phone, you know, and, and, and whatever you need to do to get in front of people to get experience. And then finally, once you're comfortable doing sessions and running NLP processes, record them all on video and put them on YouTube and link back to your site where people can book a free session, a free live session with you. Okay, at the end of the live session, sell them a package, okay? Or whether it's a pre-recorded package or, or a series with you. But ultimately, do a lot more free sessions online and offline so that you can get the experience, so that you can be totally confident, and so people can get a taste of you and your style and what you do so that they are comfortable with the idea of giving you money after they have a free live interactive experience with you. That's, that's my best advice for anyone just starting out or who's trying to raise their income is do more sessions. Yeah, that, those are great tips, especially following the trends. Um, I see countless clients that I've talked to that, that want to start making money in NLP that are are missing both those. So I really appreciate that. Um, if you got value, you those of you listening, if you got value to this, go ahead and click the share button, share it with your friends, uh, make a comment. We'd love to interact with you on the comment board. And I think your friends would appreciate uh, getting access to this interview as well. And tell me, to give you some background on, on what I've been up to the past couple months, is I went ahead and I, I asked my my email list that have been uh, newsletter subscribers for quite some time, and I go ahead and I went ahead and pulled them and I asked them, "What's your number one biggest outcome that you want to get out of using NLP?" Well, the reason why we're here today is because the number one outcome was I want to make more money. So that's exactly why uh, I asked you to be here and I, I thank you again for being here. And what I did was I, I made the process as simple as possible and I've created the NLP Profit Blueprint. Uh, that's because what else, other, what else people wanted was a very simple process. They wanted a blueprint, give me the steps, one, two, three, four. What can I do uh, that's simple, that's easy, that's proven to work so that I can take my knowledge of NLP and turn it into cash? Um, this is a course that you know we could go ahead and sell online if we were interested, but I wanted to make it as easy as possible to have people get started and people to follow in my footsteps and, and your footsteps. And so what we're doing today right now on this, on this interview is I've decided to give the CD away for free. So my company is covering the expense of producing the material and producing the CD. I wanna ship it to your door for free so if you're interested in learning what we what we talked about today, and if you're interested in going from just having knowledge of NLP and turning that knowledge into cash, then what I suggest you do right now is click the link that's on your screen. That'll take you to a page that describes um, everything that's gonna be in the CD. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna give you this NLP Profit Blueprint CD absolutely free um, when you reserve your copy today. I will put a small disclaimer on it, and that is we've only created a set number of these CDs. Obviously, there's quite a bit of expense producing them and packaging them and everything like that. So there's only a set number of CDs that we've produced. So what you wanna do right now, before anything else goes on, before you uh, even finish watching this interview, is click the link right now and make sure that you reserve your copy so that we can rush it to you um, while it's still free. Uh, we've put, uh, Tellman's actually interviewed me and we got some great tips, some great strategies. If you liked just what we talked about today, you're gonna love the free CD. Uh, so go ahead and click the link right now and get the NLP Profit Blueprint CD absolutely free. Yeah, uh, you, you guys absolutely have to listen to this. It's gonna blow your mind. There are so many strategies on the CD that you can use to immediately take your existing and future knowledge of NLP and turn it into both large and passive residual income streams. So you're, you're really, really gonna enjoy some of the cool different ways that we expose during that CD. So I absolutely agree. You guys should pick it up right now. You're gonna love it. I just wish I had this when I got started a few That's years right. ago. Right. That would have cut some, uh, cut some years off my, my learning curve. Well, the, the link there's on your screen, the NLP Profit Blueprint CD, it's our gift to you. We'd like to give that to you for free. Uh, Tellman, thank you so much for being with me today. Do you have any final words? No, I'm, I get into action, man. Start doing more sessions. Do it now. Do it now. 
All right. Well, thank you. It's been, been an honor being interviewed. Awesome. I really appreciate the opportunity and we'll talk to everybody very soon. Awesome. Thanks, Tom. Bye. Bye.